Hello. In this video, we will talk about how to default a Power BI report or a dashboard to a specified date range. Specifically, if I have a report that spans a uh, period of time, uh, here we're looking at our coronavirus dashboard. The link will be available in the description. And that dashboard is currently driven by this time range. Um, where a user can specify a wide range of dates. Uh, sometimes you want to build a report that defaults to current week, current month, last seven days, last, th last 30 days, and so forth. So uh, in this video, I will talk about how we can build such a report that will uh, default to that date range uh, as desired. In this tutorial, I assume that uh, you are not a DEX expert. So instead of me just uh, typing out all of the DEX formulas uh, really quick, I will take a little bit of time to make sure that you understand how that DEX is written uh, so that you can use the, these technique in your own examples and adjust and adopt um, these approaches to your own data set. So first, let's um, figure out how to default our Power BI report or dashboard to a current week. Um, in order to do this, there is a couple of things that needs to happen in the data, in the date dimension of your model, so that we can support at least the concept of what a current week is. So um, most likely in your data set, you will have a date column, and then you'll have a bunch of other columns that describe the date. Specifically, what you would need to do is you would need to have um, a week ID. So you need to have a column and that column should uh, should should uniquely identify um, uh, a week. So in this case, what I'm doing is I create a week ID by concatenating a year and the week. Right? And so I um, in this dex uh, here, I just do a simple concatenation of year hyphen um, and uh, week. And that gives me the week ID, which is unique for, so for example, week one of 2016 uh, will have a different ID that week one of 2017. So what I will do is I will start building out our final calculation in multiple steps, just so that again, assuming you're not a DEX experts and you, um, uh, you can benefit from me building out that calculation slowly. So what I will do is I will create a new column in our date dimension and I will name that column is current week. So now what I need to do is I need to say yes if uh, this row in this date dimension is representing a current week and I will say no if this row in this dimension does not represent a current week. So what we will do is um, um, we will start very slowly. So the first thing that you need to be familiar is the today function. So the first thing I'll do, I'm just gonna type that out and hit enter. And what that dex function does, it just populates every row in this dimension with the, um, with the value for today. So today, uh, as a, at the time of this video is 19th of May, 2020. So you could see that every column in the video is populated with that number. So now what we want to do is we want to find the week ID uh, uh, for the current week. So um, uh, one way we can do this is to do a simple if statement. We're going to say if uh, the current date, which is date date in our table, is equal to day, we're going to return true, yes. And if it's not, uh, we're going to return no. Okay, so a very simple if statement. So we're going to go through every row in the table, and if it's, if it's the same day as today, we're going to say yes, and if it's no, we're going to say no. Hit enter and see what we get. It's going to take a little bit of time to process the statement. And now we see a bunch of ands uh, for no, and we also have a y, and we see that sure enough, 9 19th of May, which is today, we have Y. And now we know that the week ID for the current week is 2020-W21. So now what we need to do is we need to write the logic that instead of just marking one row for the current week, 
we won the all seven rows where the week ID is 2020-W21 are marked as Y. So let's see how we can uh, achieve that goal. So let's go ahead and start uh, writing this down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce a variable. And if you're not familiar with variable, it's uh, worth your while to do a little bit of a digging and understand how that works. Basically, uh, uh, the way we're going to do it is we're going to say um, we're going to declare a variable, call it current week. And now we need to make sure that we calculate that variable. So uh, what we're going to what we need to do is uh, we need to find that current week um, as we're traversing the entire data set. So um, uh, as you probably know, um, when you create these calculations uh, for a column, um, uh, that calculation is created viewing just one row at a time. So if I start in uh, the row one for 2016, I only see that one row. I don't see the entire data set. So I need to step out of the current row, look at the entire table, and find that week that corresponds with today's date. So the way we do it is we're going to use a calculate function. And calculate function is the function that allows us to um, uh, to play with the default filter filter content uh, context um, for our expressions. So what we're going to do is we're going to say calculate, which will allow us to specify a different filter. And now we're going to uh, say uh, max. So the reason we're going to do max is because um, we would just want to return one row. If you don't specify max, uh, we run a, a risk of our expression returning one, more than one row, and we're trying to just write one value into the current week. So max is usually a good way to just make sure that uh, our return value is, is a singular value. Now we're going to specify um, which column in the table we we're looking for. So we're looking at date um, week ID. So that's this column. And now we need to make sure that we only get the um, uh, the week ID for um, for the um, for the week where the date is the same as today. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna uh, use a filter function, and we're gonna put a new filter on our table. We don't want to just see the current row; we want to see all rows. So we're gonna say all date. So by when we by us saying all date, we now are looking at the entire table, and now we could put our filter function. We're going to say where date column is equal to day. So now when this um, statement is executed, we're going to get the value of the current week. So in our case, if you remember, it's going to be 2020 uh, dash uh, w21. And now uh, we just have one more thing to do, and that is we're going to return let's see what's going on. We need to close this parenthesis. Okay, so we're going to return. And what are we going to be returning? We're going to have another if statement. So now we're going to go through every row of this table and compare it with current week. And where current weeks match, we're going to say yes. And where the current week does not match, we're going to say no. So we're going to say if date um, date uh, week ID is equal to current week. And we're going to say yes, and then we're going to say no, otherwise. And that's it. Once this um, logic is run, hey, looks like I'm missing a uh, parenthesis here. So let's add this parenthesis and check this. This looks good. This looks good. Hit enter again. And now we see that uh, all seven records for 2020 week 21 are marked as Y. 
So every time we refresh our model, it's gonna run this logic and whatever the current week happens to be, it will be now marked with um, Y in is current week column. The next thing I wanna do is, let me unfilter that. Um, I wanna create another um, column that will uh, default, it will help me mark only the records that are uh, within the last seven days. Again, I'm gonna uh, maybe go a little bit slower for some of you guys, but uh, again, this video is for the beginners in DEX. So just bear with me. I'm gonna, again, step through different steps to really make sure that uh, if somebody's struggling with the calculations, they can understand all the steps. So I'm gonna create a new column and I'm gonna call that column um, ease last seven days. Okay, and again, I'm gonna do it in different steps just so you understand how things work. So uh, the other thing that we can do when we work with dates is we can deduct one date from another. So let me give you an, an idea. So I'm gonna say today, we already saw how this function works. It just returns the current date. And I'm gonna say today minus this column here, date, date. So let's see what this returns. So if I hit enter, we will see that uh, we're gonna have this new column populated. And then we see this weird dates, 5.18.19.04, blah, 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 right? So uh, the reason we're seeing this is because the format of this column is daytime. If I'm gonna change this to whole number, you will see that uh, what's gonna be in this column is the difference, um, Let's wait, okay. So there's gonna be a difference in days between today and this date. So apparently there is exactly 1600 days between today and January 1st, 2016. So now let's start uh, keep building this, um, this function out. So now that we know the difference between, so we can use this date now to to, to do the arithmetic necessary to find the last seven days. So the way we're gonna do it is, we're gonna create a variable again. So say variable, we're gonna call it date uh, delta. And all this variable is gonna do is the difference between today and whatever value of date is in this column, right? So basically it's gonna calculate this number that you see in this column. Now that I know what this number is, I could do my basic arithmetic, right? So all I need to do is I'm gonna say return, and I'm gonna do my if statement. And the if statement is gonna be if my date delta is greater than zero, so assuming there is no data for today, so today, uh, date delta for today will be zero, and uh, let's assume, so if you wanna include today, you would say equals to zero, uh, in my case, uh, there's no data for today. We're always one day in a year, so we're gonna say we're, uh, is greater than zero. And, to ampersands, date delta is less than eight. Um, we're gonna say yes, and otherwise we're gonna say no. Okay, so only the days between seven and eight, uh, one, uh, one and seven inclusive, are gonna be marked as yes. So now I'm gonna hit uh, enter. Uh, let it do its job. Um, and uh, now we see the problem is because I marked that column as whole number, I'm gonna make it a text. Let it run. And we see this is populated. And if I pick is less seven days, I'm gonna say yes. We see the last seven days, starting from 18th, which is the day before, and going back for seven days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the last seven days uh, relative to today. And again, every time I process this model, um, both of these columns will update. And you can see that only two of the last um, of these days, last seven days, are in current week. So today is Tuesday, and you can see only Monday and Tuesday are uh, marked as yes in current week, and then these are the yeses for the last seven days. 
Okay, now that we added this logic to our data dimension, let's see how we can accomplish our ultimate goal is to have our report auto advanced as a current week and current month or less seven days change. So we're gonna go to our report and actually the heavy lifting's already been done. All I have to do is click on filter. And then let's say we're gonna do the current week. So I'm gonna grab this current week, add it to the filters on this page and just say yes. And now we only have two data points for May 17 and May 18. So um, uh, in this particular case, um, current week is not full, right? So I could have written a logic to do prior week and other things, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna just gonna add another filter that says is less seven days, add it to our filter and say yes. And now you see that it's only showing me the uh, May 12th through May 18th. So, uh, so this every time I process the model, uh, let's say I, all I need to do to make this logic work is set up uh, the processing for the model to be done daily. So as new data comes in and model is processed, the date dimension will be processed as well. It will get recalculated and all of those Y's and N's will get updated and uh, um, um, our dashboard, if I, if I have this page and I have this Y is checked, so every time the model is processed, um, this date will get advanced to the next day every day. So we're only going to have the last seven days in this window. So uh, you can use the same logic for a um, variety of purposes. You could say last you know, current fiscal month or last closed month. Um, last number of business days. Uh, we will have another video talking about business day calculation, but uh, the approach will be the same. You, uh, you add the um, um, uh, necessary columns to your date dimension um, and mark date records, uh, yes or no, based on whatever logic um, that is necessary to default your report to a specific date range. And then you just add that filter to either the whole report or just uh, just a uh, required report page. And uh, you set it and forget it. Every time the model will refresh, every day the users go to your page, the, uh, the screen will automatically default to the desired date range. Hope you found the calculation uh, approach to break it down in, sp in different multiple steps useful. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video and please come again for the next one. Thanks. Bye.